Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your Bibles to the Old Testament. We're going to look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 34. All right, let's take a look at chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. See, this is talking to us. It's the future. You know, because this hasn't happened yet but it will one day because I suppose time has no meaning to the God that created the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob who created heavens and earth verse 3 their slain also shall be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Well, I just did a multi-part study on the fig tree. Didn't Jesus curse the fig tree? Oh, yeah. Now, we're going to go back to this verse 4 and take a look at other parts of the Bible that talks about the heaven being dissolved, the heavens being rolled together as a scroll, the host falling down, Verse 5, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. What? It shall... What? For my sword shall be bathed in heaven? Bathed in what? Probably blood, right? Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. God's got a people of his curse? What? What about John 3, 16? For God so loved the world. Uh, let's take a look at I do Mia, the people of his curse. Well, if you read Ezekiel chapter 35, oh, uh, let's see. We'll take a look at verse 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance, inheritance of the house of the Lord, I mean, I'm sorry, of the house of Israel because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, S-E-I-R, and all Idumea, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So Idumea is tied in with Mount Seir, S-E-I-R. So who, who does Mount Seir belong to? 
Okay, Genesis 36, verse 9. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. Esau was the twin brother of Jacob, who was Israel. He's also called Edom. And they, the descendants were called Edomites, and they lived in Mount Seir. And, of course, the so-called black Hebrews think that white people are Esau, the Edomites, and that we are the people of God's curse. Uh, let's see. In Deut Deuteronomy 2 and verse 5, it says, Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Okay? So, Genesis 36, verse 8. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. And if you belong to Edom, you are an Edomite. So, let's see. All right, so did you know that Esau, Edom, Edomites are the people of God's curse? Now, I did a, an entire Bible study on why God hated Esau. It's kind of a deep subject, and if if you've never read the Bible from cover to cover and, and you didn't consider reading the Bible a priority in your life, I, I wouldn't fool with it. But if you want a deeper understanding of the Bible, I would suggest take a look at it. There's a reason why God called the people of Idumea the people of his curse. Verse 6. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidney of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood and their dust made fat with fatness. Unicorns. Interesting. Do you know that uh, there are unicorns in the earth today? Yeah, I know. When you look at the, uh, the well, when you look in the average media, you know, talking about unicorns, they want you to think it's a horse with a horn sticking out of its forehead. No. There is a Asian rhinoceros with one horn that's what uni means uni means one rhino means nose and its actual name is unicornus unicorn is rhinoceros or rhinoceros so how did a a one-horned Asian rhino become a horse with a horn sticking out of its nose with rainbows and sprinkles and stars. And then they laugh at the New Testament and say, ha, 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 unicorns, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. They won't be laughing when the Lord comes down with his great sword with a slaughter. And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's, the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch. What is pitch? It's... Uh, 
like tar, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. We're going to go back to verse 10. I'm going to read it first. It shall not be quenched day or night, night or day. Okay? So let's go back to verse 9. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up for forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. Huh. Sounds like the lake of fire, doesn't it? But the, cor but the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all her princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortress thereof, and it shall be an habitation of dragons, dragons, and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. We're going to go back to the screech owl, too, in this verse. There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow there shall there and there shall the vultures also be gathered every one with her mate here's some really good advice in verse 16 seek ye out of the book of the lord and read seek ye out of the book of the lord and read no one of thee shall fail None shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. And he hath cast the lot for them, and his hand hath divided unto them by line. They shall possess it forever, from generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Now in verse 14, when it mentions the screech owl, the Hebrew word, and basically in English you pronounce it Lilith, L-I-L-I-T-H. And if you know of Stevie Nicks, uh, she play, uh, sang with a group called Fleetwood Mac. I'm showing my age. But she used to put her when she do her concert she used to dedicate them to all the witches of the world and if you look up Lilith there's a bunch of witches that uh, consider her their I guess like a patron saint their goddess and where do they get all this stuff well it's from the Jewish Babylonian Talmud And I don't believe any of this stuff. I'm just telling you what they believe. They believe that Lilith was the first wife of Adam before Eve. And that um, she didn't want to go... Well, let's just put it this way. She wanted to be on top, if you catch my drift. She thought being underneath him was beneath her dignity... So she left Adam all alone and ran off to be the wife of Samuel, which some say is Satan, blah, blah, blah. But uh, according to Jewish legends, she, she was the original, um, I think it was a succubus. She would suck the life, the breath, life breath out of children when they were sleeping. 
I mean, you know, where do they get all this stuff? You know, I mean, one word, Lilith, where do they come up with all this? I mean, but Lilith, she's supposed to be this evil witch goddess thing. And uh, I don't know, where do they come up with this? Well, you know, there's a reason why the Bible in the book of Titus, Paul said to pay no heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Where do they get all that garbage anyways? You know, it's nonsense. And and I used to, you know, when I first came to the Lord, I, I used to, I went to the, I went to the uh, library and started looking all this kind of stuff up in the, we had a large Jewish reference section. You know, we had the Jewish Encyclopedia, which is a multi-volume, all kinds of stuff. And I'm looking up, reading all this stuff going, where do they come up with all this stuff in the Bible? Until I finally realized they don't believe the Bible. Most of the great majority of people that call themselves Jews don't believe anything in the Bible. I mean, it's a shame, really. It's, it's a shame. All right, so let's go back to verse 4. All right, in verse 4, And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Now, where did we read about that? Let's go take a look. That was in Isaiah 34, verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. All right, let's go to the uh, second book of Peter, which uh, a lot of heretics will tell you, Oh, this is a, that's a fake book. That doesn't belong in the Bible. They'll, uh, they'll want to throw these other weird books in, like the Gospel of Thomas and all these other weird, strange things that I don't think Thomas wrote the book of Thomas. They'll want to slide that stuff in on you. But they'll deny that Peter belong, Second Peter belongs in the Bible. All right, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. All right, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. The second epistle, epistle's just fancy word for letter. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. Now, if there's holy prophets, there are unholy prophets too. That ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord, and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts. Last days, right? Scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Or uh, since the Big Bang and everything evolved, depending upon who you talk to. And uh, verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of. What does it mean to be ignorant? It means you lack knowledge in something. It means you don't know something. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you don't have any knowledge. When it comes to engineering a bridge, I'm extremely ignorant. When it comes to brain surgery, I'm ignorant. Rocket science, I'm ignorant. I admit it. Calculus, very ignorant. But when it comes to Bible knowledge, a, uh, atheists are ignorant. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, 
The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Let's talk about the flood of Noah, people. Do you know that the flood of Noah was destruction to the world, but it was the, the salvation of Noah and his family? Because of the giants. They were ungodly. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. You know that Judas Iscariot was called the, the man of perdition? Do you know that the Antichrist is called the son of perdition? Verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. So God's going to, you know, the earth isn't going to be flooded again. It's going to be burned. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But his long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, I kind of wonder, I wonder, you know, I think even the Lord would like to see Satan repent, but I mean, it, it never happened. But uh, I don't know. That's just a thought. Verse 10. Now this ties right in What we need, what we're studying here. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The heavens are going to pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, day of the Lord, day of Christ, the day of God, right? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And this is why people hate Second Peter, uh, especially those of the Yeshua Hebrew roots persuasion. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Ooh, in Second Peter, Paul's called a beloved brother. You ever hear people tell you Paul's a false apostle? These are the people that tell you 
Second Peter doesn't belong in the Bible. Oh, Peter didn't write. Peter didn't write Second Peter. <laughs> Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Do you know that people that deny Paul as an apostle, Peter right here writes, they're unlearned, they're unstable, and they wrestle Paul's words just like they do the other scriptures under their own destruction. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let's go back to Isaiah 34. Uh, verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Didn't we just read? Oh yeah, it's going to be dissolved. It's going to burn with fervent heat. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Uh, I know we read this in the one of the previous, either the intro or verse chapter uh, part two, but we're gonna we're gonna take a look at the uh, the scroll thing again. It's gonna be in the book of Revelation. All right, I read this in the previous one, but we're going to skip. We're going to read it, but we're going to skip around a little bit. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. Now, this is the tribulation period. Uh, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of air, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Well, didn't we read that in Isaiah 34 about the figs falling? Oh, yeah. Verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freed man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Back to Isaiah 34, 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, and all their host shall fall down, as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Didn't we just read that in Revelation 6? Oh, yeah. All right, so let's go, uh, go to verse 10 in Isaiah 34. Uh, let's see. Verse 9. And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever from generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. 
where do we read about the, the smoke and the land becoming burning pitch? Where do we read this? Well, part of it is in Isaiah, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the, on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. I think I would rather have the father's name written in my forehead than the mark of the beast, 666. What do you think? And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Harpers harping with their harps. Harpers harping with their harps. Say that ten times real fast, right? And they sing, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Well, that counts me out. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. Not only is there a gospel, there's the everlasting gospel. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. And there followed... Another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Why do they say that twice? Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. See, there was a, spirit, uh, a physical Babylon. It was destroyed. And then there's a spiritual Babylon, and it's going to be destroyed. And I had done an entire Bible study on who Babylon is. I know you got, uh, there's a lot of stuff going around. They'll say it's Mecca, it's New York City, Moscow, Jerusalem. There's a lot of uh, Rome. Uh, you know, there's a lot of theories out there, but what does the Bible say? I, I do it, my study, just from the Bible alone. There's a lot of candidates. There's a lot more cities on seven hills than you know of. Did you know that Istanbul, Turkey is also built on seven hills, from what I understand? As is Rome, as is Jerusalem, as is Moscow. So, if you're interested, take a look. But it says, Babylon has fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in, in, in his forehead or in, in his hand, it's funny, all the modern Bible versions say on. My Bible, King James, says in. If any man worship the beast and in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. Industrial strength, people. It's not diluted. It's poured out full strength. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So if there's holy angels, there's unholy angels. Verse 12. 
and the smoke. It kind of gives new meaning to the, uh, uh, you know, you go to a, a bar or something, and, you know, uh, is there a smoking section? And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So if you're a Torah keeper and you don't really have the faith of Jesus, I guess you're kind of out of luck. Or if you have the faith of Jesus, aren't we supposed to keep the commandments? Well, you know, somebody asked Jesus, what, what was the great commandment? He says, well, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. He says, and the second is like unto the first, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. That's basically keeping the Lord's commandments. I'm paraphrasing there, but uh, I think you get the point. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle, and another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. Now, when I did the fig study recently, the uh, I also covered grapes. You know, grapes were the symbol of Israel. Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the wine, the vine, the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great wine press of the wrath of God. Do you know when they squeeze grapes, they call it the blood of grapes, that they turn into wine? W-I-N-E. You know, you, vine and wine kind of sound alike. But Verse 20, And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Wow. If you ever uh, have problems with spiritual warfare, I could tell you some stories, but uh, I'd probably get locked up in a sane asylum if I told you uh, some of the stuff used to happen to me when I was a new Christian. Uh, would you believe that uh, they used to hide my keys? I'm serious. I, I used to take my keys to the house, you know, car keys, and, and lean them, put them on the desk by the bed. I mean, always, same place every night. I'd wake up and they're not there. I'm like, what? And I'd have to search through the house and, you know, sometimes they'd be under the couch or, or in the kitchen or I was like, what? I mean, you know, nobody, I, I didn't have anybody else that had the keys to my place and 
And and the landlord did, wasn't sneaking into my house at, you know, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. But, uh, you know, I figured, well, it was probably the devil's just, you know, that was the worst thing they could do to me, was hide my keys. I used to laugh at them. And I used to read this to them. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. So, in Revelation 14, in verse 11, you know, and it says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So in Isaiah 34, verse 10, It shall not be quenched, night nor day, the smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So, I think that's it for this Bible study. We'll be back. We're going to go through every chapter where it talks about the day of the Lord and the day of Christ. And we're going to contrast the two. And by the time uh, we're done, hopefully you'll realize either the day of Christ is the pre-trib rapture or that the day of the Lord, the day of Christ are the same event. So, all right, well, this is Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.